we are gathered here today because of the unfair, unjust victimisation of two of our UCU stalwarts, David Hardman and Mark Campbell. The only two compulsory redundancies to have taken place. The Dean of our faculty, Professor Dominic Palmer-Brown, produced absolutely no written evidence whatsoever at our appeal hearings. Um, there is no audit trail of the process of decision making that led to our redundancies. They didn't even tell us what criteria we were being measured against. Uh, you know, the feedback that we got afterwards was so perfunctory as to be insulting. I feel that you know, the decision probably had already been made, but Mark and myself are too loud a voice within this institution to be allowed to continue here, particularly at the point where they are now trying to get rid of another 395 members of staff. UCU have told us explicitly we are now taking them to court and we will win that court case. But they'll work on the basis it'll take about six months for that to happen. And is it worth it to them to get embarrassed in court in six months time or to have me and David around for the next three months fighting the 395 job cuts? This dispute occurs in the context of a struggle that's going on to defend the higher education system of this country, both a, a campaign around pay and tackling the gender pay gap and casualisation, but also the struggle against the white paper and impending legislation. What the bill proposes to do is to make more places like London Nats turn them into private universities. The Tory government hates what, what London Nat represents and they have their willing supporters in the vice chancellorate in places like London Met, one of the few university vice-chancellors to say he supports the white paper. Everything points towards this university essentially being made to fail in order that it can be privatised. I believe that the new chair of your governing board is an ex-executive for Pearson. So he knows all about the provision of private education around the globe. Pearson's have been heavily involved in the privatisation of a lot of uh, the public sector in African countries, um, American teachers hate Pearson for lots of reasons. If you go onto Google and type in Pearson Education Controversy, you will get a long list of the terrible stories from America and other places about what Pearson Education are actually doing. School teachers know very well about Pearson's because Pearson's administer the SATs test in schools and you've seen the complete and utter shambles that that has been and what is amazing is the person who oversaw that shambles the head of Ofqual is now going to be the head of Ofsted not only did she oversee that shambles but she's also a founding member of the ARC Academy chain Castleshire, they've sold both of our buildings they're selling the equipment and the machinery it's so sad that they're closing these courses because they're courses that so the musical instrument making was the only BSc left in, in the UK of its kind. I would actually like to thank all the people who have signed the letter that Mandy Brown has sent to the uh, Times Higher. We are still taking signatures. Uh, we will publish an updated version on our blog site. This will be the beginning of the destruction of public university education in the United Kingdom and it has got to stop. I don't have to be working in there to be standing out here that's and right. that's what I'll be doing. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. We are going to fight both outside and inside. We are going to be marching on the 23rd and we are going to be taking these people on and we are going to win. No ifs, no buts, no education cuts. No ifs, no buts, no education cuts. No it's no buts, no education cuts. No it's no buts.